Oops, sorry about that. It's a little shaky. So this is part two of One Point Perspective to show you other shapes one can create um, using this perspective drawing method or this technical drawing method. So in the previous video, if you haven't seen that, check it out. It shows how to construct what I have so far on the page. Now, if I wanted to make something like a cylinder, for instance, let's say I wanted to draw this cup in this world that I have on the page. I'd at least need to know how to draw a cylinder in perspective. And it starts very similar to the way I draw this box. Um, I draw a square in perspective. Okay. And then I'm going to put a dot right there just as a center, a, a, a designator for the center. Okay. And then I'm going to create a circle that's inside this square. Now I'm freehanding this. When I was uh, in college, my technical drawing professor showed us how you could do this with an ellipse ruler. I don't have one handy, but uh, after that class, I realized that, oh, that's the reason why they have those things. So if you don't have one of those things or have one of those things accessible, um, something that can help is to make these uh, registration marks, I suppose. It makes it look like a target. And you can use this target to help guide your hand to draw the circle. I'm used to doing this, so this motion is just muscle memory, but um, in the beginning, it can feel a little clunky, okay? And that's okay. If your circle, your ellipse, your oval looks a little clunky, that's perfectly normal. So I have um, this ellipse in, um, in perspective, and I could just draw the two vertical lines of the cylinder going up like this, but then what one figures out very quickly is that if you just try and do this, I mean, that looks okay, but that's just me being able to um, accurately guess what the top would look like in one point perspective from where I've established the horizon line. But if you were to... Let me grab my eraser. If you were to really accurately do this, to really make sure that it's in perspective, we're going to draw a box going up from the square that I've already established. Like so. And then... Just using the rules of making a cube. Oh, sorry about that. Using the cylinder, which is throwing me off. There we go. Okay. Um, what I could do is use the same methodology that I did right here in the sky and make a circle that fits within this box. And then I've got more of an accurate reading. Just cleaning this up a little bit. Now I've got more of an accurate cylinder towards the top. And you could keep it transparent if you wanted. Let's say it's something that was made of uh, glass. 
or plastic, for instance, or something that was like a hologram. Um, uh, yeah, just uh, something that's transparent, right? Um, you could just leave it the way it is. If it's something that's solid, you want to erase this back curve and then have something that's more like that, right? And then from there, which will be another video, you can transform that or sculpt it, quote unquote, into something else. So that's a cylinder. Um, really quick. Other shapes. Let's say you needed a pyramid. So there's my square in perspective, very similar to the cylinder. Just want to create this marker for the center. And in this case, you actually do need it more than just a visual guide. You make a tetherball pole. That's what I like to call it. And then connect the four corners to the top of the tetherball pole. And same thing, you can keep this transparent, like I think of those glass pyramids at the Louvre, for instance, or you know, that's just part of your, your narrative. But if you wanna leave it uh, solid, you don't really need these lines in the back or these. But typically, you do make everything see-through so that you can, uh, or transparent, so that you can really construct whatever shape or object or prop you're creating so that it looks like it's in perspective properly. Um, a cone, I'm actually going to use this uh, box down here just because I'm running out of room. Um, it's very similar. It's actually these two shapes combined together. The methods of these two combined together to create a cone. So circle inside the square. Now notice how I like sketch this too. Like I, I make these repeated curved lines to really get this shape, to, to make that circle fit snug inside that square. Um, little dot, tetherball pole. Um, I used to just do this, and you can see the cone, I suppose, but if you really wanna create that illusion, you create multiple lines like this. And that creates a much more sophisticated looking construction and emphasizes the shape of a cone. If you really want to take it one step further, you could cross hatch curved lines like this across the body of the cone. Now, the more you create, the more the, the illusion. Um, and that's obviously see through, and then you know you could create some sort of. Um, aesthetic of a solid cone by playing with shadows. Very similar to what I just did, but you know, now you have something that's got uh, an opaqueness to it. But yeah, cube or prism slash cube. Cylinder, pyramid, cone. I mean, there's many, many more things, but I think those are I think those are essential basic shapes one should know in order to create other things in perspective.